Now to the other major story we're following this morning, the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. President Biden and the First Lady arriving at Dover Air Force Base just a short time ago as the bodies of the 13 service members killed in Kabul arrive home. This comes following a new warning about a security threat. ABC's Julia McFarland is covering the story for us from London. Good morning, Julia. Good morning, Eva. That's right. We are entering the last two days before that withdrawal deadline, but the risk is not letting up. As you say, the president warning there could be another attack on the airport, even as the final evacuations take place. Overnight, a new alert issued to Americans around Kabul airport, citing a specific credible threat to security. The embassy warning U.S. citizens should avoid traveling to the airport and avoid all airport gates at this time. President Biden issuing an urgent warning that another terrorist attack remains highly likely and the Pentagon echoing that danger. As the final withdrawal of U.S. troops is underway, the circumstances on the ground as dire as ever. The threats are still very real. They're very dynamic, and we are monitoring them literally in real time. This comes after the U.S. carried out a drone strike just over 24 hours ago. An unmanned drone in Afghanistan's Nahangar province killing two members of the terror group ISIS-K. A planner and a facilitator and injuring another. No civilian casualties have been reported. The fact that two of these individuals are no lo lo longer walking on the face of the earth, that's a good thing. It's a good thing for the people of Afghanistan. It's a good thing for our troops and our forces at that airfield. The U.S. airstrike in retaliation for Thursday's suicide bombing that took the lives of 170 Afghan civilians and 13 U.S. service members. President Biden vowing to avenge them earlier this week. We will not forgive. We will not forget. We will hunt you down and make you pay. The president now announcing that strike would not be the last. The Pentagon releasing the names of the 13 service members killed in the bombing. 11 Marines, a Navy hospital corpsman and an Army soldier. The president this morning traveling to Delaware's Dover Air Force Base to honor those 13 U.S. service members as their bodies arrive home to the United States. Lance Corporal David Lee Espinoza of Texas, enlisting in the Marines straight from high school. As a mother, you know, it's hard, but he did serve. He did do what he wanted, but it's hard. 20-year-old Marine Riley McCollum, just three weeks away from becoming a new father. He loved his family. He loved his wife. He was a wrestler. He knew he was going to be a Marine his whole life. Lance Corporal Kareem Nikoi, his heartbroken mother, writing, This is my hero. I will never get to hug him again. And Marine Sergeant Nicole G of California, posting this picture from Kabul just days ago, comforting an Afghan baby, writing, I love my job. And guys, look, if the conflict and the threat of COVID wasn't enough, millions of Afghans are now also facing dire food insecurity. The United Nations World Food Programme warning that vital food stocks supporting half the population could start running out from September. Janae. Wow, Julia, thank you so much for those updates. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.